Dancing Fish writes, So we all know how important it is to journal by hand in our albums. I've started to do that a little more than I used to, but what do you do when you realise you've spelt something wrong, left something out, or the lines are wonky? Glitter Girl, can you help Dancing Fish mend a minor mishap? Of course I can. This week I'm going to try a little something different in terms of supplies. Instead of gathering all the supplies that I wanted for um, specific pages, I'm working with the exclusive class kit that's available at Two Peas in a Bucket, and it's put together by Studio Calico, but available just here at Two Peas. And this is called the Pieces of Me kit, and it's designed so that it can go along with the Pieces of Me workshop class, which is a mini book um, project, but you can use it for other projects too. So you can use it for uh, normal layouts, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to take you through what's included in the kit, and then I'm going to try as, as much as I can to stay just with what's in the kit, and we'll see um, how I go with that. So in the kit, you're getting um, a set of stamps that you can only get in this kit, which looks like this. You're then getting, let's start, let's see, with, with all these bits first. There's a selection of um, sequins and metallic confetti, a selection of different trims and ribbons that includes some baker's twine, some yellow bias tape, some velvet turquoise ribbon, some black and white chevron ribbon, some white twill tape, pink crochet trim, and a variety of different sizes in resin flowers. That's what's in that little bag. You're getting um, a stitched uh, notebook die cut, a full pack of the wool bow paper clips, a great a little assortment of wood veneer hearts and arrows, a letter sticker sheet in aqua, and some vintage paper here from the dictionary, so those are all going to be unique pages in each kit. In here, I'm getting some hardware in this one. So this is, ah, come out, okay. Um, two binder rings for making the mini book, but of course if you want to use this for layouts, just save this for something else, no problem. And um, some badges, a little heart and definition, and some brads. And then this one. Lots and lots of <laughs> labels in different kinds and little pockets. And then lots of tags to put inside those pockets. Uses all different sorts of journaling spots and things. Some little envelopes that the tags fit in, some bigger glassine uh, pockets, a doily, and some vellum envelopes. So lots of goodies there, and then there's the paper, of course. So let me see, let me show you what you're getting in paper. So you're getting polka dots and stripes in the yellow Echo Park, wood grain, and um, a geometric pattern from Studio Calico, text and polka dots from Studio Calico, spots and stripes from Echo Park. This is a sassafras paper from um, for Studio Calico with a floral and then a fabric uh, quatrefoil type design. Another of those circular patterns with polka dots in the back. These which make great labels and, and journaling boxes and things like that. Or the big red frame on the back. Some Miss Caroline stripes and polka dots. And the um, basic gray alphabet stickers in the dark and the light. So a lot of stuff here that's really, really useful, very neutral, but still whimsical enough to be fun. Um, and very useful things packed into this kit. So definitely things you can use on 12 by 12 pages or any other project that you want, not just the mini book kit um, if, you, if the workshop uh, the workshop might be great for you, but you certainly can use it uh, on things other than the workshop. So I'm going to get started today with answering some questions about handwriting, handwriting your journaling and what to do if it goes a bit wrong. And the sample projects will all be from this kit. 
I'm starting with two 4x6 um, landscape photos on the yellow diagonal stripe and I just want to add a little bit of color with those on a photo mat. So I'm going to use this aqua and I think I'll save some of the more circular pattern where it will be more visible. So I'm just coming down to this bottom corner here and adding a little bit of a border. go and then I can just trim around that to get it the right size and that's going to be the main element of my page which then allows me plenty of room for journaling which is what we want to talk about and a title and some embellishment. Starting with this on the side of the layout because the photos are kind of angling um, this way if you follow the eye line from the picture or the movement from the photo but I didn't want to put it right at the edge because I wanted to have the freedom to add something here and I just wanted to bring in a little bit more pattern and color something that would have a multiple color pattern so not just um, this single color and that single color but both of them in the same pattern. This also brings in a little bit of green that I can um, work with with the embellishment then and this is just the back of that same pattern paper that I use for the mat. So from the offcuts, I just took um, a long strip and then a wider box. And I can just tuck this under the edge here. And all my adhesive is kind of about an inch away from the edge. So everything is stuck down here, but I can still put things underneath those the edges so that I can tuck layers under. And this one I'll add just there. And that starts to give me a bit of a, f a formula for where things are going to go on the page. Now I want to, in this case, put my journaling in one of these pockets. So I'm thinking that this will work right here in the gap of this kind of um, right angle so that I'm going to then work up in the space that's here. And I actually am liking the idea of bringing in some red where there's um, the, the primary colors of red and yellow, um, but also bring in that that green and the aqua. So um, I think the red will work here. Now, um, what I'm thinking with the journaling is that I'm going to use this tag for all the writing. The key to being able to read something that you put on a tag is that if there's anything that's going to be above it that would get in your way if you opened the top of the page protector and went to grab that tag. So if there's a lot more here, like say I had a really fancy alphabet with a lot of glitter on top of it, every time I put my hand in the page protector to get that tag and read it, I would probably damage the title or at the very least I'd end up with glitter all over my hands, which is not a problem for me, but may be a problem for you. So um, I just want to make sure that there's nothing that can be damaged straight above. So anything that's going to go in this space between the tag and the top of the page, there can still be things here, but it needs to be flat um, and nothing that's going to break. So for example, if I um, use these little sequins, I'm probably going to use them further down the page or over to the corner. I'm not going to put them here because they're something that, because they're so small, it would be really easy to knock them out of place even with a strong adhesive if I put my hand in the page protector. So that's my trick for um, for journaling in a pocket and you can also um, journaling in a pocket is up to you how easy you want it to be if you think that this is writing that you don't want everyone to see and you only want people who really 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 make an effort then hide it away further on the page tuck it underneath something so that it, it's less obvious, it's harder work, you'd have to take the whole page out of the page protector, things like that. But if it's something that I'm quite happy for you to read, then I'll make it easy for you to just grab it out of the top of the page protector. One little trick for the stamps. On the stamp set, the I love is all one stamp, um, but I want to be able to use just the word love and keep the I separate. So I'm just going to cut the two stamps apart and don't freak out too much. I promise they will go back together for any time I want to use them um, together. So, because if you just make one cut, you'll be able to put them exactly back to how they came. But I just want to be able to use that one word. And I know that I'm going to probably want to do that 
several times on, on different layouts. So for me, it's worthwhile to go ahead and separate the stamps. The other option, if you wanted to do it just this once and not cut them apart, is to cover the eye with a post-it note when you're inking the stamp and then pull it off. Or you could put the post-it note down on the paper, but I find it's easier to put it on while you're inking and peel it off because then you don't have an uneven stamping surface. So I'm going to stamp just that one word in the middle of the um, label, but I also wanted to test the color. I wanted to bring in the green, so I'm using a Jenny Bolin green ink pad, and I wanted to show you how you get two stamp colors, really. So if I stamp once and then twice, so there's this darker um, true color that comes from just the ink pad the, the first time it's inked, and then there's this lighter shade, and that's what I want with this layout because I think the darker green is just a little too harsh for all those colors, but I really like that lighter green. So what I'm going to do is do exactly what I just did and stamp it once on the sheet. Ah, and this also gives you a chance to see if you've picked up anything extra. I've accidentally got ink in the wrong place by pushing too hard on the ink pad. So I can just try that again, be a bit more gentle this time, and then I'll see if I've picked up any extra. To bring in a little more of the green, I'm going to cut out the green book plate from this pattern paper and bring in some of the green uh, polka dot paper. There's also this stripe, but I'm thinking that this stripe is just a little bit too bold unless I maybe use a very tiny strip of it. So maybe just a little strip of the stripe and a little bit more of the polka dot. To mix all this up and bring it all together. I want the striped piece to go over the top of everything on this side but underneath the photos and then come out the other side. So what I'm going to do is just slide it under here for now and then I'll be able to pick it up and put the adhesive on there as I go. So there's no adhesive on there at the moment. I want to layer these two at a bit of an angle like that. So just tacked that together and I can add enough to hold it in place on the other side. Start to press that down and then I have a collection of just all sorts of the littler um, patterns. So this polka dot and I want to make sure that comes below the, the stripe and a little bit more of that aqua. And those are just off cut boxes nothing particular about them. And then I can add this strip right over the top. And then I'll add in this sticker and I'm going to attach that with some foam dots so that I have a bit more dimension there. By putting the label here, I've ended up with two instances of red amongst all the other yellow, green, and aqua. So I want to pull in a third little instance of red um, to make this all come together. So I'm just going to go right near and create this little triangle here rather than going all the way across the photo like I normally do. So um, I've pulled out some other red elements from the kit and I'm thinking what I'll do is add that little badge on top of the bag and this paper clip on the tag itself attaching it to um, attaching it to the bag or if I decide that becomes too much of a fuss or it makes it hard to read or anything like that I could just put the tag uh, put the paper clip on the bag itself and, and not attach it to the tag but then I'm I'm, I have two little red things here and I'd rather it be a grouping of three or at least an odd number of some sort. So I've pulled out one of the red, or, sorry, one of the wood veneer hearts, but I would like it to be red as well. So I'm just going to use a red ink pad and probably not put it on top of the layout just in case I get ink everywhere. And just run it over the top of the ink pad so that now I have a lovely red toned heart to attach to my layout there. So then I end up with that nice little grouping of threes in two ways. So I have three spaces with red, but also in this one I have three separate red elements that work together as a group. 
at this point I have the title and most of the the basic page layout so I have some embellishment and and pattern paper going on and I've got a place for my journaling my photos are there so I'm, I'm ready to start looking more seriously at the writing and in this case I'm going to do quite a bit of the writing on this card but I might also put some um, straight onto the background so I was thinking that the more emotional writing um, and I don't mean emotional in an overly touchy-feely kind of way. I just mean the stuff that's um, less just the facts. So here I might put the just the facts stuff. So I might put his birthday and, and his statistics when he was born, like his uh, length and his weight and all that sort of uh, stuff that goes along with uh, recording a, a newborn in your album. And um, But on here I might write about um, the particular occasion so this was the first time I got to meet my new nephew and and things like that because we don't live in the same place so um, those kind of, uh, of words that I want to record I might put on this card so that they're tucked away but then the um, the more factual things are just here on the background okay, so I'm ready to add my writing and in this case what I want to make sure I get right is the thing that's going to go right there on the background sheet and so that's all my um, uh, details like the date and uh, weight and length so I've written that down on a bit of um, scrap paper so that I can just have those things there rather than try and remember them so I can Write it straight onto the background. And then let's talk about different things that can go wrong. Now, I did actually make a mistake here, and it's a rookie error. I should have known better, but oh well. What happens is sometimes the first time you put the pen to the paper, it doesn't quite um, come out normal. It, you just have a, a tiny little bit of dryness at the end of the pen and then your ink starts going. So in this case I had to start the letter L over again and that means I have two tails to my letter L. In this case I'm just going to leave it. And in fact I could come back in here and obviously I am now <laughs> and come back in here and just make it a fancier letter. And that's one way to do it. If I was really unhappy with it, I'd just cut another strip of one of these pattern papers and add another layer. No one's going to know how many layers of paper are underneath there. And because there are all sorts of layers, and I use layers all the time, no one's going to suspect that that layer is there to cover up a mistake. So um, you wouldn't think, you, you saw me put this together, you, you don't sit there and think, oh, there are layers of paper there, she must have messed up underneath. So I could just add another layer here with um, all those details again, and it would be absolutely fine. So that's the easiest tactic. It's just cut another paper, have a second go at writing it, and, and cover it up. Then with the tag, writing on a tag is a little bit less pressure because I can just start again. And I get to chances per tag because if I'm only going to write on one side of the tag if I mess up on the other side I could just cover it with pattern paper or if I'm sticking it to the layout it doesn't matter at all but if it's going to be like this where it's going to be taken out I could just cover the back with solid pattern paper and it wouldn't matter one bit. Now one little thing to note about handwriting and that's that a lot of scrapbookers say that they're not comfortable with their handwriting or they don't want to use it on their layouts because they feel it's messy and they get the rest of the layout exactly how they want and then the handwriting they feel lets them down. So a few tips for that. One is don't leave the writing to your last step. I almost always tend to put it in at about this stage. So there's going to be more embellishment on this page, but I'm doing the writing now. It means that I don't get to a point where I think, oh, I've put so much effort into this layout and then I make a spelling mistake and it all goes wrong and I feel like I want to junk the whole thing in the bin. Um, try to avoid that by making it more part of the process, not something you just add on at the end. And that will help because then um, as you add more to it, so say I don't want your attention to go to that L that I've messed up. I'll put more embellishment in another part of the page to get your eye to go somewhere else. And the writing will then become a design element that you'll use naturally. The other thing is to practice. My handwriting, well my handwriting, my third grade teacher. My third grade teacher, who of course in those days um, taught handwriting in class, told me that my handwriting would never be le legible. I, um, I 
I, it's the only thing I ever had detention for. I would miss recess to go over and over and over my handwriting. I had so many mistakes. It was so messy. And the only way it got better was that I sat and practiced. Now, I didn't practice in the third grade. It took me a great many years until I decided, actually, I do want to have legible handwriting. And I'll be honest, it was in my teenage years when I decided I wanted my handwriting to be cute like some of the other girls. So I just started writing the alphabet over and over again, and I would work one letter at a time. So I would write a whole page of A's, and I would try all different ways to write A's, and then I would go back and circle the ones I liked, and then I would write them in that way over and over and over again. And and then I'd start again. And I just did it when I was when I was doodling. And then the normal times that you would doodle when you're listening to something, when you're on the phone, when you're doing something else, I would just start doodling letters of the alphabet. And it was only with years of doing that that it all came naturally. And now I don't feel the need to write something out and then um, copy it out again. When I first started scrapbooking, I did a lot of um, penciling in lines, penciling in the words, and writing over the top. And that's definitely a way to get more comfortable with it. Um, but now I tend to think, I tend to feel like it's more natural to write straight onto whatever design element I'm using. But it wasn't, I didn't start that way. It wasn't a natural, instant process. So definitely just keep with it for the long haul if it's something you really want to include. But know that you can always just correct it. Just add another layer, try again. Even at this point, if I totally bodge this background sheet, I could pull everything up and put it on another background sheet and just get rid of the yellow 12 by 12 and put it on another page. So everything is, is salvageable. Don't worry too much. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish this layout, ne uh, layout now with the rest of the embellishment and the journaling on the card. But do keep in mind, over at Two Piece, there's some links to um, some more discussion about uh, specific handwriting things that you might want to try. I wasn't a perfect stamper. Here's an example. I wanted to use this super cute little smile sticker here by the heart and I used Saison and stamped straight onto the photo and I got it a bit wrong. So this is exactly what I would do with a mistake in the writing. I've just stamped again on another piece of paper and I'm going to add that layer right over the top so that you can't see the mistake. And now you and I know what's there, but you have to promise to keep my little secret um, because uh, nobody else will know unless they've watched the video to know that really that is only there purely because I made a mistake and I had no intention of putting the green pattern paper over the photo. I've got the journaling added to my uh, tag and to the bottom. And so now I've gone back to a little bit more embellishment and I wanted to repeat some of these same elements, but in an in a different color, so I want to limit the red to there. So I've um, used the green paper clip and turned some of the wood veneer um, hearts to the green to match the stamping and the other paper elements. And I just wanted to show you one little um, thing with the sequins that come in this pack. So I'm just going to pop them onto the layout there. They're not going to stay there, I promise. And I'm just going to use um, a tiny little uh, bit of liquid adhesive. So this is glossy accents, but you can use anything that um, is an, a liquid adhesive that you can get a really small amount. So what I want to do is just come in and add a few little dots. hold the different pieces. The way to make these work is to vary the sizes. So these two are different colors but very close in size. So what I'd rather do is bring in something that's a little bit smaller. A little sequins up here at the top and a few down here in the bottom corner and I finished it off with that tiny little um, heart outline stamp just in the pale green to match um, the stamping I'd already done. And that gives me something that goes on the diagonal across the photos and it connects everything together. And that's my page completed for this week. But I still have lots left in this kit. So um, there'll definitely be more pages to come from that kit. And I do believe that mild-mannered scrapbooker Shamel Lane might be uh, posting some things with that later on this week. So I hope that you'll pop over to Two Peas and uh, join the discussion about handwriting your journaling. And I'd love to see your pages in the gallery this week. Thanks for watching. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.